Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 2. Today we've got an unexpected game. We've got FC United of Manchester in the FA Cup second qualifying round before we take on Hyde United, also pretty close to Manchester actually. So this episode actually we're playing Hyde at home, it just says over there. So I was about to say this whole episode is going to be in Manchester, but it's, it's, it's not. Anyway, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Second episode of the season today and we've been doing okay, I've got to say, since we were last here. Considering the teams that we've played... We've done okay. So we'll, we'll go through that first of all, I think, and then talk about some other things. So since you were last here for the, it was the Witten Albion game, wasn't it? Where they had a man sent off in the third minute and we somehow managed to draw despite having 20 shots. I mean, we played very well. We just didn't score goals. And that's kind of been what it's been like since you were last here, I've got to say. The game afterwards, we played Buxton and they beat us 2-0. They're one of the favourites for promotion this season, Buxton. So it was kind of... I expect them to beat us. I wasn't too surprised by that. However, in the games we played after that against Frickley, Ultrium and Gainsborough, three teams that are probably going to be nailed on for playoffs this season, we've managed to pick up three draws, which is good. So I'm pleased with those results. The Frickley was a nil-nil game. Um, it was a game we probably should have won. I think we got the better of Frickley. We hit the post two or three times in that game, so we got quite unlucky. But a nil-nil, I'll take either way. That was a great result. The Ultrium game, a one-all, that was also pretty good. Um, they were much better in the first half. We were much better in the second half. We potentially could have gone on to win it in the first, in the second half, rather, if we played a little bit better. But Jamie Bird scoring the goal for us there in that game. After that, games for Trinity, much of the same as the Ultrium game. They were much better in the first half. We were much better in the second half. We scored a penalty, Luke Holmes scoring it in the 72nd minute to make sure it was 1-0. But again, a pretty decent game. We stepped up just a little bit against Pontefract Collieries. Uh, we won 2-1. Javon Splat with his first goal, actually, at the club, finally getting it. I was a little bit worried that he wasn't going to be scoring goals because he hadn't scored in any of those games. But he finally got one against Pontefract in the 32nd minute, followed up by Kyle Porter in the 67th minute to make sure we got the win, which was really good. And then last time out, we played a team in the league below us in the cup and we lost some penalties we played a little bit of a rotated side a few youngsters coming in there just to give them a little try I've got to say just because I think it's important to try young players out it didn't particularly work for us Skeffington put us 2-1 uh, up actually they scored in the 28th minute they scored late on and then won the penalty shootout unfortunately so it wasn't great they also a day before that game signed Ozuma as well the guy that used to play for us at left back for a half a season I mean, he played maybe 5, 10. In fact, let's look, look at him. How many games did he actually play last season for us, Ozuma? 16. Not many. He wasn't going to play this season and they signed him on a free transfer and he scored a penalty against us in a shootout. So maybe that was him getting his revenge. I don't know. Talking of transfers, though, we have made another one and potentially another one will be coming in this episode as well, which I think you'll quite like. So if we quickly look at the transfer history window, you can see that Jack Holmes has gone... Aidan Walker's gone and uh, Ozimut has gone as well. These players going out. Aidan Walker going to Gainsborough Trinity, one of our rivals there. But I don't think he's going to be playing much because he was never good enough to play here. He's actually played four games for them, to be fair. Played like half the games last season for us, but never really was going to develop into it. He was one of the bits of Deadwood we had to get rid of, basically. So he's gone, but gone to Gainsborough, which is quite an interesting one. Um, Jack Holmes was the midfielder that we had wasn't really going to play this season too much either. So he's gone to Telford and then, of course, Ozma as well. But the guy we brought in is Declan Bacon from Osset United, who was their top scorer last season in the league below. Uh, 19 goals last season in the Evo Stick Northern Premier Division uh, in 30 appearances, getting them promotion. He actually played three games for them this season and scored two goals. And I'm thinking, ah, that's pretty decent. Hopefully he'll do that for us. Five appearances, zero goals for us at the moment. Um, both him and, um, and, and Javon Splatt, Neither of them have been scoring goals, unfortunately. Uh, another signing that could come in this episode is another striker. So, between the three of them and Connor Robinson, sure, they have to start scoring goals. Bacon, though, is pretty decent. Three-star current ability, four-star potential. Again, he's got pedigree, knows how to find the back of a net. Did it 19 times last season and two times this season with Osset United. He was sitting top of the table, I think, at the moment. But he should be a decent signing. He's kind of a replacement for Connor Robinson, who's just not really going to get any games this season, I don't think, especially if he gets the other striker coming in. So, he's a good player to have. It might mean we have to say goodbye to Connor Robinson. What all that means for the table is that we sit 10th at the moment on 11 points. Two wins, five draws and one loss. Five draws is significant. That's that's too many, I've got to say. Although the teams we have drawn against are all above us. So that's quite good as well. Uh, as mentioned before, us at United still topping the table on 20 points with Boston just below them, which is interesting. We're taking our hide after this, aren't we? After the Cup game, who are just below us by points in 12th position. So that should be quite a good game. In the meantime, though, we're taking on FC United and Manchester playing a 5-2-1-2 formation, which is a bit interesting, or a 5-3-2, whatever you want to call it. 
Um, this was actually suggested in the comments last or last season, I should say, at some point, as a potential shape at least we can use next season. And I quite like this shape. It's worked for me in the past, so I thought we'd go with it today. So we've got Calderwood in the sticks. He's actually been very good this season. I've been impressed with him. Kept a few clean sheets as well, which is really good. In front of him, that back line of Idaho, Nati, and Gray, who have all been pretty good, actually, sort of swapping. Gray, he's the guy on loan from Cambridge. He's played most of the games, I think, but it's Nati and Idaho that keep swapping themselves around a little bit just to try and find the best partnership. But in a back three, they'll all play. Right back on loan from Lincoln, Bredis starts at right wing back, but Joe Howell, who is signed to be our star midfielder is actually the best player who can play at left wing back Joe Howell he's just come back from his injury uh, so you can finally see him today in his four star credibility five star potential glory but if we look at his report and look at left wing back he's actually the best player to play in that position so he's doing that today that means that Masters and Skeffington come into the middle of the park today Skeffington's probably better in that position than Kyle Porter is but Masters always going to be starting that ball winning midfielder position. Uh, Matt Cotton gets a rare start in that attacking playmaker position just in the advanced midfielder. And then Declan Bacon is the first time you're going to see him today as a pressing forward with Javan Splat starting as a poacher. If we get this other striker in later on this episode, he signed the contract as far as I'm aware. We just need to wait for him to accept it. If we get three strikers in that are all... I mean, this new guy that comes in might be three and a half star, maybe four star current, current ability. Giovanni is four star. Um, Bacon is three, three and a half star. So I think if we get all three of them in, we have to start playing a two strike system to get the most out of them, I think. Otherwise, we will just be wasting money, I think. Right then, kickoffs upon us. FC United and Manchester playing away from home. This should be quite a money spinner for us, hopefully. I think we should get a fair bit of ticket sales from this. This should be quite a big crowd at FC United they usually get quite good ones so I'm excited for this I don't think we'll win particularly this is the best team that we've played competitively in the entire save I've got to say so far I mean we've played better teams in friendlies but they don't count this is a competitive game FC United and Manchester that's the best team that we've come up against so I'm looking forward to it it's going to be a real test for us they're in the league above us in the Vanarama National League North they're I think mid-table so again this should be quite a good challenge to see if we got promoted tomorrow where would it be in the table? How would we face up against teams in the league above us? Looking at the stats, you'd say not very well, which is something we may have to work on. But possession-wise, we're doing all right. So maybe this is kind of something we can try and work on, try and develop this kind of... This is the tiki-taka tactic, apparently, as well, this, this one we're playing today, the five at the back. So hopefully, we'll tiki-taka our way into the back of the net a few times to score a few goals. First highlight of the game, then 32 minutes into it. Must have been a pretty boring game to start off with. It looks like it's coming towards us as Skeffington comes forward, puts it into Bacon, who's fouled in the area. Javan Splat is apparently the man to take the penalty and finishing a 15 penalties of seven. Yeah, all right, we'll give it to Javan Splat to take the penalty for his second goal this season if he scores it. Come on, Javan. He steps up to take it to put us 1-0 up in this game. He does it. We're 1-0 up against FC United and Manchester, and that is huge. Right away, though, straight after that, a highlight comes in for FC United and Manchester, and, uh, of course, equalising less, less than a minute later. This is the 34th. Yeah, exactly. A minute later, they've equalised. That's you think we'd be able to switch on a little bit more, wouldn't you? You'd think we'd be able to just switch on for at least 30 seconds after we score a goal. Looks like another one's coming for them now as they just hit the crossbar or the post agonisingly there for them. Very lucky for us that we're still in this game. We have got to half-time, though, with the scores level. The stats very much in FC United's favour, but the stat where it matters scoreline is one all, so that's quite good. What do we say at half-time then? I think we say, hand over to the assistant. See what he says. He's done a good job there. We've got a new... In fact, I'll talk you through this actually um, after the game. We've got some new staff come in. We've got rid of some of the old staff that just weren't doing that great. Didn't particularly do... We had a bad season last year. We were all complacent, obviously. But I think I was also very complacent with our staff. I think the staff that we'd had from day one had pretty much stayed there, really, for the most part. So we had to get a few new ones in. So we've got some new members of staff, which should be all right. Um, I'll, show you, I'll show you the assistant afterwards. I think he's probably the biggest upgrade that we've had. Chance now for us, actually, in the 66th minute, actually. Skeffington now comes forward. Masters on the ball. This is quite a good chance for us to try. If we can score a late goal here and try and hold on as Bacon's been put forward... He holds it up and then doesn't really do much with it, unfortunately. Loses possession. And then here come United on the counter-attack. They're going to score. I can feel it coming. It has been put in the back of the net. Wasn't put in the net by the number 10, but Kane, the number 7 for them, on the counter-attack. Shoot from distance, to be fair. Calderwood should have done better, I've got to say. And we should have scored at the other end of the pitch. They're now going to score their third goal. I can feel it coming as it nearly goes in the back of the net, to be fair. That, that was punishment from FC United. 
they really really punish us truly there and that is the that is the difference between us and a team of the league above us you know that's that's the difference that's what they can do I don't quite know what Bacon was doing if I'm honest with you with his shots at the other end of the pitch he should have just I think it must have got it stuck in between his feet the way it just seemed to stop and all the defenders went the other side of him I don't know looks like as things stand though we're going to be crashing out of the cup which is never nice to see we will make some changes out there I think we're going to bring uh, Kyle Porter on for Skeffington and I think we'll bring Connor Robinson on for Bacon as well, see what he can do at the end of this game. He's not had much of a chance this season, so we'll give him one now. We've got maybe a chance now, but this could be actually be no chance. It's for the highlights. It's for the, the, the tactics going on. Bloody hell, Tom. I always make that mistake. There's always a highlight going on in the background when you make changes, and it just finishes a few seconds after you press confirm. But I always get excited thinking we're about to score. Unfortunately, though, I don't think the changes have done anything. I don't think the changes have made any impact on the squad. And it looks like... Despite us going 1-0 up and should have gone 2-1 up in this game, we're going to be losing it 2-1 unless in this final minute we can win the ball back, grab a goal and take it to a replay, which we potentially could do as Howell plays it back to Calderwood. Calderwood now shows some distribution out to Duncan Idahan up towards Javon Splat, who didn't, can't quite get there. Connor Robinson gets in there, though. has to square it. He wins a penalty for us. Javon Splat to send us to a replay against FC United. Back at our place, back at home. Come on, Javan, to do it in literally what will be the last kick of the game. Scores the goal, puts us back on level terms with FC United. We are going to a replay. This is the reverse of what happened last season. If you remember last season, we were winning the game until literally the final second when they equalised and then they won it in the bloody replay again in the 90th minute. Will justice be served this season? Are they going to come to our place for the replay? And are we going to absolutely thrash them in the 90th minute? I hope so. Well, the Hyde United game, it's cancelled for this episode. No Hyde United. This episode, it's all about FC United of Manchester today. Um, so, I mean, I don't know when Hyde's been re... I mean, it's uh, ages away. So, no Hyde today. All it is, is FA Cup this episode. Like, very similar to last season as well. So, hopefully, it goes better than last season. Anyway, as promised, we need to talk about new, new, new recruitments and things like that. So, um, we've got a good physio in. I want to get a sports scientist in, but they won't let me get one in because apparently we don't need one. So, I might get another physio in, but I don't really see the point in getting another one. I don't think we need it. Uh, we've got a director of football and three scouts. No data analysts, though, actually. So, we should probably get one of those. But we're apparently the best in everything in our division, which is very good to see. And the best in most things as well with coaching. We probably need a goalkeeping coach, but we can't have any more coaches at the moment, which is a little bit frustrating but the new assistant manager coming in James Dawson Lund was apparently the uh, assistant manager at Spalding United and then caretaker manager and has now come to us and he's all right he's better than what we had before he's got some decent judging player ability and potential and, and man management much better than the chap we had before him as well and slightly better in training as well so I think he's quite a decent improvement in terms of assistant manager in fact can we compare him can we is Stuart Reddington still there no where is we need to just find Stuart Reddington um, because he's right there. He is Stuart. I felt a bit bad getting rid of him because he's got so much Lincoln United on here. 2005, 2006, 2009, 2013, and then assistant manager from 2014 to 2021. And then I just got rid of him because I realised he's actually not very good, as you can see from his attributes here. Compare him with the new guy who we've got. This guy, James Dawson Lund. Everything is in James Dawson Lund's favour, apart from goalkeeper distribution, goalkeeper handling and adaptability, and slightly in level of discipline. So, I mean, I think I can make that trade-off for everything else being in James Dawson Lund's favour. Here is the new striker that we're trying to bring in, Max Brown. Accept this. He hasn't been able to find a club for ages. When we tried to sign him in, in, in summer, he wanted £1,300 per week. He's now on £130 per week. He's literally gone down 90% in his wages, but... Max Brown comes in, 22-year-old striker, as a target man, which is quite an interesting position to have, I think. I think that would be quite useful for us. Can play as a poacher as well, but I think that kind of supportive role as a target man is something we, we, we miss from the squad. He comes in, he was at Altrincham last season and scored 23 goals in this division. So I think that is superb. I think he could be a game-changer this season if we can get him scoring goals. My only concern is now... We have got three really good strikers in Brown, Splat and Bacon. Like, they sound like a bit of a comedy trio, to be fair. But 
we've got three really good strikers in them. I think it's wasted using a one striker system. So I'm going to have to try and work something out in between episodes to try and incorporate a two striker system into the way we play. It might have to go back to a 4-4-2, but then we've got wingers that we need to use. It's, it's a very difficult one. We're going to bring Max Brown on the bench. He's not going to start today because he's nowhere near match fit, but we'll bring him on at some point in today's game to see what goes on. I don't think I want to make changes other than, in fact, no, I don't think I do want to make changes at all. I think I'm happy with that lineup. So let's submit the team then, proceed to match. We're at home today. This is going to be a big advantage. If we can sneak a win today, this would be huge. Right, kickoffs upon us once again. If we can just, I'd say replicate what we did last game, but we did have to rely on two penalties. So if FC United want to give us two penalties again, that's absolutely fine by me. Early highlight though for FC United and they're coming forward with a lot of space in the middle, a lot of space out wide. We seem to be quite narrow. I'm not quite sure why we're playing quite so narrow but they are working the space very well FC United as they come back centrally. Out wide again with too much space. Kane puts it in, cleared only as far as the number eight again. Martin is probably going to put it back out wide again because there's so much space. The cross looks to come in it does come in cleared only as far as their number six who puts it back out wide again when is this goal going to come out to number eight i'm losing my voice as well what martin he puts it in the back of the net we all knew that was coming from the length of the highlight and the amount of chances that we gave them we just couldn't get rid of it and they've punished us for it four minutes into the game well at least we'll make some more money off tickets this game that's quite nice we'll make some more money off tickets that's that's the positive 20 minutes into the game now and potentially another chance for fc united as they put another cross in roberts Gets on the end of it this time. And FC United much more clinical in today's game. They're really turning on the style. Obviously, last game, they had a bit of a let-off, didn't they, I suppose? They should have got the business done. They didn't. Today, they've been bollocked by their manager, I assume. And they're getting the business done quite effectively, unfortunately, for us. Stat-wise, we're not that bad stat-wise. We're, we're, I mean, FC United is slightly better in terms of stats. But we're. it's not like we're being massively outclassed by them, apart from the scoreline. We are relatively so in this game we just can't really seem to create the chances and I suppose that was down to the really good FC United defence. Another chance for them just before half time as they come forward on the ball number six into number 11. Tackled though but only as far as their number six and they just keep putting the pressure on. We're not inviting that we shouldn't be inviting the pressure we're trying to play tiki taka style of play which should kind of work at home and when it's not like we're on a defensive stance we're on a pretty neutral sort of mix of attack and defence sort of thing. So it's not like we're meant to be sitting back. That's a ridiculously good goal to score. <sighs> I don't know how the goalkeeper is actually not made a save there as well, to be fair. Lee Masters are now on a six rating as well. So he's obviously been very detrimental to the performance today. And we go in at halftime 3-0. Um, is it too late to do the hide game instead? Is it, <laughs> is it too late to do hide? All right, aggressive. Show me something else in the second half. I reckon, actually, at half-time, we take off... I mean, it's Splat who's not played well, so we'll take Splat off and we'll bring Bacon on. Matt Brown, or Max Brown, rather, coming on as a target man on... Let's put him on attack, shall we, actually? Let's put him on... Okay, Brown, target man, attack. Bacon is going to be the pressing forward on support instead. Let's try that out. Maybe time to make another change, perhaps. We do have a highlight just about to go in the background. We're going to move Howell in for Masters. Howell is going to come on, I think, in that midfield. We'll bring on Reece Delan as a wing-back. He's not the best, but he'll do there, I've got to say. In fact, he should be better than there, really, than, than Howell is, but apparently he's not. And then, I think we might not do anything else. I'm not quite sure who to bring on. I don't think anyone else is going to change the game for us, although Howe has a chance to come forward, shoot and scores. We could be back in this game. The comeback could be on. Fantastic timing for me to press confirm there. That was really good. We'll continue with the tactical change. He can move into his more central position and hopefully we'll have a different dynamic down that left-hand side of the pitch. But as there's a highlight straight from kickoff, either it's going to go for us or FC United and Manchester are going to do really well. Then number two, oh, I thought was about to give up the, the possession to us. We have won the ball back. Delan on the ball into Matt Brown. Max Brown. I don't know why I'm saying Matt, but it's Max. 
Either way, we lose possession and FC United of Manchester can try and build from the back once again. Back to their goalkeeper. His ball forward's rubbish and now we've got men through the middle. Nati into Howell. Cotton on the ball. Cotton coming forward out towards Bredis who can put a cross in. We know he can. He can put the cross in. The new target man, Max Brown, there. It's now 3-2. And all of a sudden, I said they weren't going to give up a three-goal lead. I'll tell you what, boys. Push forward. Push forward. I am scared now that I've got a, this is going to be really anticlimactic and there's going to be no more highlights. But we can we can pray, we can hope at least. Declan Brown picks up a yellow. I'm so pleased that Max Brown scored a goal there. That's really good. We've got a corner. Howell puts it in, cleared. It's bouncing around the area, cleared again. But I think we could have another chance here as Bredis puts it back more centrally to Nati. We've not got another chance. It's FC United with another chance. Robles to make it for. Robles makes it for. Uh, I think that is probably us out of the game now. And the referee is about to blow his whistle, I think, as we enter the 93rd minute of the game. Kane on the ball, running backwards. They're just trying to punt it up the field, looking for a fifth, which they might get. They nearly get. But that surely is going to be the last action of the game. There it is. FC United 4, Lincoln United 2. A good 500 fans at that game as well. That's going to be really good for us in terms of our budget and money as well. Unfortunately, we haven't won it. They gave us a bit of a, a hope, our players, in the 68th and 67th minute, but it wasn't to be. Unfortunate, to be fair, but um, I don't think we can be too upset with that. Well, that was a really exciting episode, actually. That was a really exciting episode. The goal we scored right at the end was fantastic, I've got to say. Uh, only £1,000 in the black at the moment. That's because... The board gave us £70,000 very recently to get us out of £70,000 worth of debt. Um, where It will say on here somewhere, won't it, maybe? Investments, yeah. £70,000 last month. That was really good. But match day income or gate receipts this season... Uh, this this month rather the thirty thousand we got so much money from the from the first leg or the or the original tie played at FC United of Manchester because that's thirty three thousand this month last month only nine thousand this season fifty three this month we've made so much money off tickets that's been really really good for us right well my plan was to show you some league games or at least a league game in today's episode but it hasn't worked out that way um so we're gonna just move forward as if it's a normal episode anyway. We're going to go, I think, to the Morpeth United game, who are sitting bottom of the table. And then we're going to play Osset United afterwards, who are sitting first. I think that's quite a good episode to do. Juxtaposed there, those two teams, aren't they? Top and bottom. Gives us completely different perspectives in both those games as well. So hopefully we can get a real balance of how we could potentially destroy teams like Morpeth and how we can potentially counter teams like Osset United who are better than us, but hopefully try and get a win. That's what's going to be next episode. So a little bit of heartbreak at the end there, but I don't think we can complain about the result against FC United. If you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here so you never miss a video. And I'll see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action. <laughs>